Good afternoon or good night, whatever in the world you are connected from. Thanks for joining us today in the first part of our literary festival. We are very happy and excited of having so many great writers and students working together to make this event a reality. I want to express my profound thanks to all my colleagues in the Department of Modern Languages and Literature. Without your dedication, efforts, suggestions and support, this event wouldn't be possible. I'm proud of us. Special thanks to Daisuke Fujimoto, who has created such a beautiful website, and to Elena Fernandez, who has worked very hard to put so many pieces together. I also want to thank all the collaborators that we have encountered in the planning process. Gay Jeller from the Department of History, Gila Silberman, Director of Jewish Lifelong Learning Program, Randy Blackford from the Office of Multicultural Affairs, Francisca Garcia Cobian Richer from Alianza Latina Latin Alliance. The arts, literature, and translation are at the center of what makes us humans and unifies us. This festival is a celebration of diversity, inclusion, and humanity, and a way of showing our capacity of resilience in the face of the current pandemic. Let's celebrate. Thanks again, and see you all next Friday for the second part of this festival. And now, without further ado, poet and professor Cristian Gomez Olivares will start introducing our guest writers and students. Thank you. Enjoy. Uh, thank you, Damaris. Uh, gracias, Damaris. And um, I'm as happy as you as being here. And uh, without uh, further ado, um, I'm going to start uh, presenting uh, our readers. And um, we are going to start with the poet and professor Laura Imayo Tartakov. Uh, Laura was born in Cuba. Uh, she has lived in Puerto Rico, Spain, France, Switzerland, and now in the United States. She's a senior instructor of political science at Case Western Reserve University. Uh, her poems have appeared in multiple books, uh, Burn Sugar, Caña Quemada, uh, and also in the kind of famous uh, Antología de la Poesía Cubana del Exilio, uh, published by Odette Alonso. Uh, Laura Imayo Tartakov is the author of Mujer, Mujer Martes, Entero Lugar, Intimo Color and Inventario. Um, and now I'm going to leave you, uh, everybody, with uh, Laura Tartakov. Gracias, Laura, por estar acá. Gracias a ti. Gracias a ti, Cristian, por presentarme. Y gracias a todos ustedes por estar con nosotros. Este poema es de mi nuevo libro, recién publicado en España. Título, Resiliencia. Resiliencia. A pesar de la nieve, los pájaros cantan, amigo. Al volar, cantar o posarse, no importa dónde ni cuándo, te traen consigo. Nada me turba ni acobarda, huérfana dejé de ser. Paso a paso, muy despacio, bailo. Con lágrimas, rocío y madre selva cobran vida los huesos. La música es a veces silencio. Gracias, Laura. Y ahora, um, Luis Tira, uh, and now, uh, I'm sorry, I had to make the switch off. Uh, and now, Luis Tirado, uh, a student from Case Western Reserve, uh, is going to read uh, the translation of uh, Laura's poem. Thank you, Christian. Uh, resilience. Even under snow, birds sing, my friend. When they sing, fly, perch, no matter where or when, they bring you with them. 
Nothing disturbs or frightens me. No longer am I an orphan. Step by step, very slowly, I dance. Tears, dew, and honeysuckle bring bones to life. Music is silence sometimes. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me correctly? Okay, excellent. Um, thank you, Luis. Thank you, Laura. And uh, now uh, we're going to move on to uh, listen uh, Juliana Makuchi Anfa Avenji. Juliana Makuchi Anfa Avenji is a distinguished professor of English and comparative literature in the English department at North Carolina State University. She's also the Assistant Dean for Diversity in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences and the past president of the African Literature Association. Enfa Benji is the author of Gender in African Women's Writing, Identity, Sexuality, and Difference, Your Madness, Not Mine, The Stories of Cameroon, The Sacred Door, and Other Stories, and co-editor of Reflections, an anthology of New York by African women poets with Antonia Kalu and Omofolabo Ahaji Sujinka. Uh, Juliana Makushi Afi Abenji writes fiction under the pen name Makushi. Her many other publications, including book chapters, articles, short stories, poetry, and interviews appear in edited books, scholarly journals, creative writing, and online magazines. So um, without taking any more of your time, Juliana, thank you so much for being with us today or tonight. No se oye. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> You're mute, Christian. Oh. Thank you, Christian. It's really an honor to be here. And um, I'm going to begin with um, a song in Beba. Beba is the language of my people, the Beba people. And this song is taken from a folk tale that a mother tells her son about her husband. So I'll just sing it. And double edge and quo young. And double edge and quo young. A boom, mamma, Jim Fiago young. A boom, oh, Jim Yoga young. Cook a look, quo young. Cook a look, quo young. Cook a look, quo young. And now uh, we are going to have Hannah Clark with the English version of this song. Hannah? My husband is a glutton, oh young. My husband eats and dies, oh young. When I eat, I share with you, oh young. When you eat, you do not share with me, oh young. young. Thank you so much, Hannah. Um, so now uh, we are going to have again Juliana Mfa Abeji. Uh, she's going to be uh, reading now um, another text in another language in Pidgin. Juliana? Na so my sister them. Na so. Na so. Na this palaver way we so so talk say trouble go must can come out Sunday. We no know say trouble day only for we corner. Na so my brother, trouble day only for we demote. We know the siam. No be na this balog way we na Frenchman. Uh huh. Le soi disant frère du président français, ou même il dit qu'il est même quoi ou, avec son soi disant frère de Hong Kong, n'est-ce pas c'est comme ça qu'ils sont en train de nous tuer ici au village? Nassau, my brother, 
Today we yes and I'm mutengene. Tomorrow, no be now we. Uh, true, true. Small time, it go be now we. Oh. For daytime self, man of his son, for sick of say, white man them, they can cut all with firewood, carry them, go fix white man country. We day here, we day die. Hmm. No be now we picking them, don't die for mutengene, so. Now, what do we go do now? What do you mean now, what do we go do now? Thing where we get for do now, now for drive that white man them, make them come out for here. When I go only, she don't hear say, now what do we go do now? Now what do we go do now? Which kind of balog this? I swear, Master Peter, I think say you the Chris. I say, Papa, I the Chris now how? For sake of say, I don't talk say, me will drop white man for we country, you say I decrease? Yes, crease there for your head. If we touch white man now, no be na gob na go send soldiers them, may they can't catch we, go put we for garum. I beg, I know if you go me prison again. Yes, no be so, I know if you go me prison again. When I see me the bagger, make we only she don't hear the fear prison. The dream mimbo. Now wait till we go do now. Now wait till we go do. But when I sabi drink, when I sabi she don't drink palm tree. The drink a fofo saute with peace or we close. The drink book. The drink trantrua. Uh huh. All we talk the only inside Saxon bra, inside Guinness, inside Beaufort. But make correct talk sleep for ground. All man they run hide inside bush, like say quick for don't come. When I know the shame, self. Man trouble, now waiting. You want to make we do waiting. I beg leave, man. Make man drink his job as Indeed, my sisters, it is so. Indeed, this is what we've been talking about, that there will one day be trouble. We didn't know trouble was right here. That's it, my brother. Trouble's at our doorstep. We don't see it. Isn't this the bad luck your Frenchman has? Uh-huh. The so-called brother of the French president or whatever he claims to be with his so-called brother from Hong Kong. Isn't that how they're killing us in this village? Indeed, my brother. Today we hear it's Mutangane. Wouldn't it be us tomorrow, hmm? Truly, soon it will be our turn. In broad daylight, one cannot see the sun because the white man is logging our trees to go fix the white man's country while we die here. Weren't those our children that just died in Mutengane timber truck accident? But what can we do? What do you mean, what can we do? What we should do is force the white man to leave this place. All you do is sit here and say, what can we do now? What bad luck is this? I swear, Mr. Peter, I think you're crazy. Papa Alain! How am I crazy? Because I've said we should expel the white man from our land, you say I'm crazy? Yes, you're mad. If we touch a white man, the government will send soldiers to come and arrest us and put us in prison. Please, I cannot go to prison again. Is that so? I cannot go to prison again. Look at this fool. Let's just sit here cuddling our fear of prison, drinking alcohol. What can we do, what can we do? But you know how to sit and drink palm wine, drinking local gin until we piss on our clothes. Drinking palm wine, drinking Tantois export. Yeah, we do all talking with Souts and Brown Guinness with Beaufort, but when there's an important matter, we run and hide in the bush as if the Quefo masquerade was approaching. Shame on you. Man, trouble, what is it? What do you expect us to do? Please, leave me alone. Let me drink my beer. Thank you, thank you so, so much to both uh, Juliana and Hannah. Uh, it's been a wonderful reading. Uh, and now we jump from Cameroon to France and we have, uh, we have uh, Kimberly Osborne, Osborne, I'm sorry, 
Kimberly Osborne is a senior major in, uh, in international studies and French at Case Western Reserve. And Kimberly is now going to read uh, the poem of uh, Guillaume Apollinaire, uh, both in French and her translation of that poem into English. Kimberly, all yours. Thank you. Um, so a short introduction to Guillaume Apollinaire. Um, he was a French poet who fell victim to the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. Um, he's considered one of the foremost poets of the early 20th century and was recognized as a leading um, avant-garde figure and an incar uh, incarnation of l'esprit nouveau, which is the art movement which directly translates to new spirit. Um, he wrote many poems about war, peace, and death inspired by his experience fighting in World War II. Um, so I will be reading his poem, Renan d'Autum, from his poetry collection, Alcool, which was published in 1913. Les enfants des morts vont jouer dans les cimetières. Martin, Gertrude, Hans et Henri. Nul coq n'a chanté aujourd'hui. Kiki Riki. Les vieilles femmes, tout en pleurant, cheminent. Et les bonnes ânes, braillent, ion, et se mettent à brûter les fleurs des couronnes mortuaires. C'est le jour des morts et de toutes leurs âmes. Les enfants et les vieilles femmes allument des bougies et des cierges, chertent chaque tome catholique. Les voiles des vieilles, les nuages du ciel, sont comme des barbes de bique. L'air tremble de flammes et de prières. Le cimetière est un beau jardin, plein des sols gris et de romarins. Il vous vient souvent des amis qu'on enterre. Ah, que vous êtes bien dans le beau cimetière. Vous mendiant mort Saoul de bière. Vous les aveugles comme le destin. Et vous, petits enfants, morts en prière. Ah, que vous êtes bien dans le beau cimetière. Vous, borges mestres, vous bataillez et vous conseillez des régences. Vous aussi, tziganes sans papier. La vie vous pourrit dans la panse. La croix nous pousse entre les pieds. Le vent du Rhin ulule avec tous les hiboux. Il étend les cierges que toujours les enfants rallument. Et les feuilles morts viennent couvrir les morts. Des enfants morts parlent parfois avec leur mère, et des mortes parfois voudraient bien revenir. Oh, je ne veux pas que tu sortes, l'automne est plein de mains coupées. Non, non, ce sont des fouilles morts, ce sont les mains des chers morts, ce sont tes mains coupées. Nous avons tant pleuré aujourd'hui, avec ces morts, leurs enfants et les vieilles femmes, sous les ciels sans soleil, au cimetière plein de flammes. Puis dans le vent, nous nous en retournâmes. À nos pieds roulés des châtaignes, dont les bogues étaient comme le corps blessé de la Madone, dont on doute si elle eut la peau couleur des châtaignes d'automne. So the English version of that is um, The children of the dead will play in the cemetery. Martin, Gertrude, Hans, and Henry. No rooster crowed today. Cock a doodle doo. The old women walk while crying, and the donkeys bray hee-haw and begin to graze the flowers of funeral crowns. It's the day of the dead and of their souls. The children and old women light candles on each Catholic tomb. The old women's veils, the clouds in the sky, look like goat's beards. The air wavers with flame and prayer. A cemetery, a pleasant garden, full of gray willows and rosemary, which often rise from the friends we bury. Oh, you fit well in the beautiful cemetery. You dead beggars, drunk off beer. You, the blind, blind like destiny. And you, little children, dead in prayer. Oh, you fit well in the beautiful cemetery. You mayors, you boatmen, and you royal advisors. You two gypsies without papers. Life rots you in its stomach. The cross grows between our feet. The wind of the Rhin hoots with the owls. It extinguishes the candles that the children relight and the dead leaves come to cover the deceased. Sometimes the dead children speak with their mothers, and sometimes the dead would like to come back. Oh, I wish you wouldn't leave. Autumn is full of still hands. No, these are not dead leaves. These are the hands of loved ones since past. These are your still hands. We cried so much today, with the dead, their children, and the old women, under the sunless sky, in the cemetery lit with flames. Then in the wind, we returned to ourselves. At our feet rolled the chestnuts, their husks like the blessed heart of Madonna, whose skin we wonder if it was the color of autumn chestnuts. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Uh, great, great poem. 
And uh, we now move uh, to um, another uh, another side of the planet, uh, but not that far. Uh, we have now Olga Kometa, who is a PhD candidate in the Department of Slavic Literatures and Languages at the University of Toronto. Um, Olga's research focuses on 20th century Ukrainian and Russian poetry, socialist realism, contemporary, contemporary Ukrainian literature, and other topics. Um, she's currently working on her dissertation entitled Late Modernism in the USSR, Ukrainian and Russian Literatures in the period of 1928 till 1938. So uh, I am now going to leave you all with Olga Kometa. Olga, go ahead, please. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, so the first thing you should know, this is a translation from um, one of my favorite poets of our time, Olga Lipshin, and her reading in original in English will follow my translation. So I start with uh, her poem, Translating a Life, and in Ukrainian it is Перекладаючи життя. Хтось вистелив ковдру з дикої гречки у лузі. Хтось підіткнув порхавки у кожний куток бусково-зеленого полотна. Всюди літо, лише не там, де війна. Війна, де колись був дім. А тепер тут війна можна владців. І яке має значення, що лух співає до бджіл квітковим пилом? Чи до мене рядками вірша? Або що я чую зовсім гарні імення рослин російською і перекладаю їх на моя твоя пані мать? Візьміть хоча б чайний гриб, дрібні лисички чи свинки, раннє польове зілля, загадкові сироїшки. Ці слова не названі тут, а країна, що прислала їх, стирає кожний склад своїми злочинами. Ось візьміть хоча б підберезник, їстівний вибір, береза берета твоїм язичієм на язиці. Мова, створена, щоб полюбити ліси, історії і друзів, не переймається, хто кого вбиває. На жаль, я переймаюсь. І сидячи тут, під велетенським кущем у квіті, я не бачу рятунку. Яка мовна фантазія зупинить нас, щоб не бути чужинцями-вбивцями. Чи ви взяли б російське наймення гриба, припасували б у свій лацкан для маленького свята життя? Чи перекладеться щось іще для вас? Чи так воно є? Оля, I turn the floor to you for reading the original. Thank you very much, Olga. And... Now we have Olga somewhere. Here. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Olga Lipshin grew up in Odessa, Ukraine, and Moscow, Russia, and came to the U.S. at 14 as a Jewish refugee. She's a poet, essayist, and translator which, uh, with publications in the Kenyan Review, Poetry International, and other journals. Uh, Olga Lipshin holds a PhD in Slavic languages and literatures and taught at the university level until deciding, until deciding to teach creative writing privately. Uh, from 2016 to 2020, she co-organized uh, the reading and protest, protest series from across the waters, literature for immigration. And without further ado, Olga, um, here you go, please. Thank you. Thank so you for being here. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to Olga Hometa. This is my very first reading with my poetry being translated. Thank you so much to the organizers um, for this event. And thank you to Olga. Translating a Life. And it is dedicated to two translators and the editors of a translated anthology called Words for War, New Poetry from Ukraine, about the armed conflict in Ukraine. And for Oksana Maximchuk and Max Rosochinsky. Someone spread a blanket of wild buckwheat over a meadow. Someone tucked 
puffball pillows in each corner of the purple green sheet. It is summer everywhere except war. War where it used to be home and now war by government here. And what does it matter that the meadow seduces the bees in pollen or me in lines of a poem or that I hear perfectly good Russian names for plants and translate them into you and me ish. Take the tea mushroom, the little fox mushrooms and piggies, the early field dweller, the mysterious cheese eater. These words are undocumented here and the country that sent them erases every syllable with its crimes. Take an under birch mushroom. Anyway, it's a choice edible. Birch bolit in your tongue, on the tongue, the language for falling in love with forests and stories and friends does not care who's killing whom. Unfortunately, I care. And sitting here by a huge flowering bush, I see no refuge. What languaged fantasy could stop us from being murderous strangers? Would you take a Russian mushroom name, tuck it in your lapel for the brief banquet of life? Does that translate anything else for you? Is this how it works? Thank you so much, Olga. Uh, thank you so much to both Olgas. And um, we now are going to, uh, uh, we're going to have with us Ana Izquierdo from Asturias, España, Spain. Um, Ana has a degree in technical specialist in stone applied arts by La Escuela del Arte of Oviedo. In addition to her, in addition to her formal education, she completed two years of training with the sculptor and painter Vicente Santa Rua, and also studied five years in La Academia Painting Compasso of Oviedo. She's a painter who specializes in portraits done in oil and pastel, and also designs and paints interior murals. Her work has been featured in several exhibitions and art galleries. Ana is a self-taught writer and uses her skills to write narrations about her paintings. Um, so, Ana. Hola. Uh, ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Qué tal? Hola. Buenos días. So, we are going to be hearing now. Vamos a estar escuchándote ahora, Ana. Uh -huh. Vale. Bueno, pues en primer lugar, muchas gracias por la invitación y por la oportunidad de participar en este evento. Y yo os voy a leer dos relatos que están inspirados en sendas creaciones pictóricas. Las lecturas van apoyadas por una presentación con una serie de fotografías que muestran el proceso de, de creación de los cuadros. Entonces, ahora voy a compartir pantalla. Y... A ver... Un momentito. El primer relato se titula Dioses y diosas y está inspirado en el cuadro que, que os muestro a continuación. No sabía por qué estaba allí, de pie y sin rostro, en una calle repleta de gente. Su vida y sus recuerdos se habían convertido en la misma mancha informe que los escaparates de las tiendas le devolvían de sí misma. Invisible para toda la gente que con demasiada prisa pasaba a su lado. Invisible para quienes la empujaban con rostros cansados y brazos caídos. Sintió el tirón de un hilo negro que salía de su cabeza y que la hizo levitar un palmo sobre el asfalto. Y caminó, y se adentró en un parque lleno de árboles, de tierra húmeda, pero no se percibían olores ni sabores dulces al respirar las flores. El hilo negro tiró de nuevo de ella, pero con el deseo irrefrenable de contradecirle, se sentó en la orilla de un estanque. Inclinada sobre el agua, su cara empezó a dibujarse en facciones débiles. Y tras ella, se reflejaron los rostros de más personas, sujetos por hilos negros, 
que, como el suyo, se perdían en un cielo sellado por nubes. A los dioses no les gustó que el entresijo de sus mandos viera la luz y toda la neblina de un océano cayó sobre el parque. Sus ojos, ahora ciegos, buscaron con el olfato el olor a ropa vieja, el olor a piel seca que intuyó cuando del estanque fluyó su rostro y extendió los brazos para abrazarlo. Unas manos huesudas agarraron las suyas, donde dulcemente dejaron caer un puñado de semillas rojas. Fue entonces cuando escuchó su voz, una voz ronca, una voz moribunda de mujer cansada. Has llegado para quemar la ciudad. Estás aquí, sin saberlo, intentando renovar esta tierra hambrienta. Disiparé esta neblina y ante ti surgirá una escalera que deberá subir en silencio. Arrasa lo que los dioses han creado para vosotros y darás lugar a un nuevo ciclo de vida que te conectará con el todo. Y en ese mismo instante se hizo la luz y vio y observó la multitud triste, los edificios de negro, los árboles que recordaban en ritu serio sus sonrisas de siglos atrás. Y sí, ahí estaba la escalera, construida con tinta, con pantallas relucientes, con relatos de odio y asesinatos. Peldaño a peldaño llegó a la cima, donde solo crecía una rama sin árbol, a la que fuertemente se agarró. En su cabeza las ideas se volvieron claras, pero los dioses se pusieron nerviosos y agitaron su hilo negro y lo movieron de un lado a otro para que ella se precipitara de nuevo al mundo. Las hojas de su rama iban cayendo a sus pies, formando una pira entre roja y marrón, que se movían pequeñas olas y de la que surgía una melodía, con el sonido hueco de lo que está muy lejos en el tiempo. Supo lo que tenía que hacer. Ella era el instrumento de las diosas de la tierra. Arrojó las semillas rojas al rojo manto crujiente y una llama se alzó en un pequeño remolino. Solo tuvo que fruncir sus labios, soplar levemente y el fuego encaró el primer peldaño y luego el segundo y llegó a la ciudad negra, creciendo en olas que traían oscuridad y llevaban una luz naranja que arrasó todo allí abajo. De las brasas recuperó una semilla. Lanzándola al aire cayó sobre el paisaje ahora yermo y un hilo rojo conectó desde abajo. Ahora la lucha entre los dioses de arriba y las diosas de la tierra tenía visos de seguir cruenta y ferozmente. A ella la moverían ambos bandos. Resistiría el tirón del hilo negro que la unía a los dioses y controlaría el hilo rojo para renovar el ciclo de todos los que nacieran entre las hojas que caían día a día. Ya. Gracias, Hanna. Um, ahora, Sydney. Uh, now, we're going to have uh, Sidney Negron from Case Western Reserve University reading the translations into English of uh, Anna's poems. Sydney, please go ahead. Thank you. Gods and goddesses. I didn't know why she was there, standing and faceless on a crowded street. Her life and memories had become the same stained reflection that the storefronts returned to her. Mm. Invisible to all the people who too hastily walked past her, pushing her with weary faces and drooping arms, felt the pull of a black thread coming out of her head that caused her to levitate above the asphalt. And she walked, and she entered a park full of trees, of wet earth, but there were no smells, no sweet scents when breathing in the flowers. The black thread pulled her back, but with the irrepressible desire to contradict it, she sat on the edge of a pond. Leaning over the water, her face began to appear distorted and drooping, and behind her were reflected the faces of more people attached to black threads that, like hers, were lost in a sky sealed by clouds. The gods didn't like the intricacies of their command seeing the light of day, and all the haze of an ocean fell over her. Her blind eyes sought with her smell the scent of old clothes, the scent of dry skin. She sensed when her face emerged from the pond and she extended her arms to hug her. Bony hands grabbed hers where they sweetly dropped a handful of red seeds. It was then that she heard her voice, a hoarse voice, a dying voice of a tired woman. You have come to burn the black city. You're here unknowingly trying to renovate this hungry land. 
I will dispel this mist and before you will emerge a staircase that you must climb in silence. It destroys what the gods have created for you, and you will lead to a new life cycle that will connect you to the whole. And in that very instant, the light was made, and she saw. And she observed the sad crowd, the buildings in black, the trees that remembered in serious rictus their smiles from centuries ago. And yes, there were the stairs, constructed of ink with shining screens, depicting hateful stories and murders. Step by step, she climbed to the top, where only one treeless branch grew, to which she tightly grabbed. In her head, the ideas became clear, but the gods became nervous and waved their black thread and moved it back and forth so that she would fall back into the world. The leaves of her branch were falling at her feet, forming a pyre between red and brown that moved in small waves and from which a melody emerged with the hollow sound of what is far away in time. She knew what she had to do. She was an instrument of the goddesses of the earth. She threw the red seeds into the pyre and a flame rose in a small swirl. She just had to purse her lips and row lightly and the fire reached the first step and then the second and came to the black city growing in waves that brought darkness and carried orange light that destroyed everything there. From the embers, she recovered a seed. Throwing it into the air, it fell over the landscape, now barren, and a red thread connected to it from below. Now, the struggle between the gods above and the goddesses of the earth would remain bloody and fierce. She'd be moved by both sides. She would resist the pull of the black thread that joined her to the gods and control the red thread that would renew the cycle for all who were born among the fallen leaves day by day. Thank you very much, Sydney. And um, we are gonna go back now to uh, Anna, um, uh -huh. quien va a leer uh, un segundo poema. And, um, but uh, antes de que, de que leas, Anna, sí. before you read, I just wanted to thank you for uh, the painting uh, that uh, you uh, gra graciously uh, shared with us to have the flyer, El Cartel, of oh. uh, this uh, literature against the pandemic. So thank De you nada. very much, Anna. De nada. Just a little note to everybody. Um, I'm, voy a explicar algo, Anna. Um, mm -hmm. After uh, Anna uh, reads her poem and Sydney reads uh, the translation, uh, we're gonna go back to the Olgas, uh, Olga Lipshin and Olga Cometa. So, um, Anna, por favor, uh, te escuchamos. Muy Now bien. we have Anna with us. Vale, comparto pantalla. Bien, al segundo relato lo he titulado La libertad en un sueño y está ligado artísticamente al, al siguiente cuadro. De niño le contaron que aquel hombre a quien veía todas las tardes bajo el sauce de la plaza se había quedado mudo en un sueño. Contaban que éste, al percatarse de que estaba soñando, decidió levantar el vuelo, pero que lo hizo tan alto que un buitre le arrancó las cuerdas vocales introduciendo el pico por su boca, abierta para respirar las nubes altas. 70 años hacía que no pensaba en aquella historia, pero ahora el viejo era él y se preguntó si no sería un buen colofón para su vida sentarse como Jonás bajo el sauce y contarles a sus vecinos el sueño lúcido que le devolvió a su tierra. Día a día soñaba y se despertaba como todo el mundo en aquel lugar. Hombres y mujeres pisaban su... Huyó. Allí no hablaba. El espacio era cerrado. Y los murmullos de los viejos rebotaban de una mosca a otra. Hasta que la última caía en sus manos. Y él, acercándola a su oído, le hacía cantar sus últimos bailes como Aurora. Así recordaba su vida con ella la vida entera de los dos. Ahora estaba lejos, no solo muerta, sino muy lejos. Quería dibujar su rostro, pero en aquel sitio tan aséptico era imposible. Necesitaba la tierra, los montes, los árboles y las golondrinas que volando alto garantizaban el sol. Aquella noche se acostó deseando, como las últimas semanas, tener su sueño lúcido. Y durmió, y soñó, 
Y el espacio se abrió a sus ojos en un manto rojo de mantel de fiesta y alguien lo abrazaba por detrás. Lo miró y una máscara amable, pero de esas perpetuas, le devolvió una mirada sonriente e interrogante. Estoy soñando y como Jonás quiso volar. Se impulsó y voló. Los brazos por delante, con miedo a asumirse otra vez en un sueño inútil y despertarse, como todas las mañanas, con un puñado de pastillas en una mano y el tensiómetro en la otra. Me voy a mi tierra. Y desde lo alto vio pasar la ciudad oscura. La autopista llena de luces tristes. A quienes quiso gritar que Jonás tenía razón, que el miedo desaparecía, que el amor por Aurora lo llevaría a casa, que daría gustoso sus ojos, su oído, su tacto después de aquello. Y llegó al cielo azul sin nubes de su hogar y vio el sauce de Jonás. Se sentó bajo su sombra y su vista alcanzó el todo. Y ya no solo él era colondrina. La enfermera entró por la mañana en la habitación de Liberto. Aún estaba dormido, respiraba y sonreía, pero no fue capaz de despertarlo. Gracias, Ana. Sidney, por favor. The freedom of a dream. As a child, they told him that this man, whom he saw every afternoon under the willow of the square, had been left mute in a dream. They recounted that he, realizing that he was dreaming, decided to take flight, but he made it so high that a vulture ripped out his vocal cords by putting his beak through his mouth, open to breathe in the high clouds. For 70 years, he hadn't thought about that old story, but now the old man was him. And he wondered if he would not be a good colophon for his life to sit like Jonah under the willow and tell his neighbors the lucid dream that returned him to his land. Day by day, he dreamed and woke up like everyone else in that place. Men and women stepped on their place, breathed, and searched for their identity. He didn't talk there. The space was closed and the murmurs of the old bounced from one fly to another until the last one fell into his hands. And he approached his ear and made him sing the last dances with Aurora. That's how he remembered his life with her, the whole life of the two of them. Now, she was far away, not only dead, but far away. He wanted to draw her face, but in that aseptic place, it was impossible. He needed the land, mountains, trees, and swallows flying high underneath the sun. That night, he lay down wishing, like the last few weeks, to have his lucid dream. And he slept, and he dreamed. The space opened to his eyes in a red tablecloth, and someone hugged him from behind. He looked at her and a kind mask, but of those perpetuals, he gave back a smiling and questioning look. I'm dreaming, and how Jonah wanted to fly. He propelled himself in disbelief, and he flew, arms overhead and afraid to plunge back into a useless sleep and wake up like every morning with a handful of pills in one hand and the blood pressure monitor in the other. I'm going to my land. And from above, he was watching the dark city pass, the highway full of sad lights to those who wanted to shout that Jonah was right that fear disappeared, that love for Aurora would take him home, that he would gladly give his eyes, his ear, his touch after that. And he reached the cloudless blue sky of his house, and he saw Jonah's willow. He sat under its shadow, and his sight became full. And it wasn't just he who was a swallow anymore. The nurse entered Liberto's room in the morning. He was still asleep. He breathed and smiled, but she wasn't able to wake him up. Thank you very much, uh, Sydney. Uh, wonderful reading. And um, as I was saying before, uh, we're gonna go back to uh, Olga Cometa and Olga Lipshin. And uh, uh, meanwhile, they are reading. Uh, please, everybody, uh, mute your uh, mics uh, if you can, please. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, we're gonna be hearing again, uh, Olga Cometa. Olga? Uh, all uh, here. Thank, thank you, Christian. So I'm reading now the second uh, poem of uh, from Olga Lipshin's uh, collection, Life Replaced. And the poem is titled in English, Ibn a Persimon. And in Ukrainian, it appears, Kushtuyuche Hurmu. 1954. Чотирирічна, в діда на колінах, на осонні в одеському дворику, моя мама куштує хурму. 
Вона ніколи не зустрічала такий дивний фрукт. Солодка повзуча медуза. Ну, ес, маленька мейдале, їж бо. Її дідуньо сяє, єврейча клун, навідався з колгоспу. Його борода пахне коров'ячим гноєм. Тихою російською вона питає. Діду, а люди взагалі люблять хурму? Ох, менси, дурне балакаєш! Він знімає її з колін. Чи я на те обходив цілий привоз, щоб знайти тобі найліпший фрукт, який я міг позволити купити? Бери та їж! Мама зітхає і пробує ковтнути кулю. 60 швидких обертів навколо сонця, і вона застає в себе із внуком, і зі мною, над мискою конусоподібних, однаковісіньких хачей з супермаркета, поцяткованих Каліфорнією, де вона тепер живе. І вона розповідає нам цю історію. І Адам з його «Ні, дякую, але не дякую, бабуню, за цей фрукт», і моя мама вирішує тоді розкрити ДНК їдження нашої родини. Погром, каже вона, зжер її дядька, скрипаля, коли той біг у сховище. Світ зрумигав гілку нашої сім'ї, як олень, просто тому, що йому треба їсти, просто тому, що він робить своє. Наприклад, шестирічний хлопчик. Якби він не помер, то був би старшим братом моєї мами. Вона ще не народилася. Первісток, котрий проріс у тому великому міспулаві... міскупугаві після війни. Вони всі пригощали мене, вона сумно всміхається, а самі ходили трохи голодні. Я запитую, що було гостинцем тоді? Пригоршня цукру? Яка божественна та хурма, думаю собі я. Дід моєї мами уявляв, мабуть, що обдаровує її, лише її, щастям їсти. Як же натомість? Він дав їй наказ. Насильне, годуючи любов'ю насильного годування. Немудре мистецтво примусу, котре я запихаю ложкою вадама зі щіпкою російської і котре мають за вітамін В, щоб дитина чулася вкоріненою. Як може досі бути хурма тут? Чи не хотів мій прапрадід, щоб його єдина внука знала насолоду? Може, він хотів, щоб вона опинилася у дивовижному місці, не на зневодненій землі, ані в спустошливих обіймах пам'яті, а в м'якості. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Olga. And uh, with the risk of repeating myself, Olga, uh, again, uh, we're we going to listen to you now. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Eating a persimmon, 1954. At four years old, in her grandpa's lap, sun warmed inside an Odessa courtyard, my mother tests out a persimmon. She has never met such weird fruit, sweet jellyfish creepy crawling. No, es, little Maidele, eat, her grandpa glows at her, a Jewish wizard visiting from the collective farm. His beard smells like cow poop. In quiet Russian, she asks, Grandpa, do people actually like Per persimmons? Oh, Mansi, silly stories. He brushes her off. Is this why I walked all over the Brivos market? For one perfect piece of fruit I could afford? Just for you, have some good selk and eat. My mother sighs and tries to swallow the globe, which spins 60 quick times around the sun finding her with her grandson and me, all of us considering a bowl of conical, identical hachiyas, freckled by California, where she now lives. And this story she tells us, and Adam with his niet, 
thanks, but no thanks, Grandma, for that fruit. And my mom, who decides to reveal then the DNA of our family's eating. A pogrom, she says, chewed up her uncle, a violinist, as he ran to shelter. The world chomped on a branch of our family, just like a deer, just needing to eat, just minding its own business. For instance, a six-year-old boy, had he not died, he'd be an older brother for my mother. She was not born yet, the first child to sprout in that great mishpacha after the war. They all gave me treats, she smiles sadly, going a bit hungry themselves. I ask what a treat was back then, a handful of sugar. How godlike that persimmon, I think to myself. My mother's grandpa must have imagined he gave her the chance to be just this once, the eater. How instead he gave her an order, force feeding, the love of forced feeding, the unsubtle art of forcing that I spoon feed to Adam with a dash of Russian, which passes for some vitamin R to make a child feel rooted. How there may still be a persimmon in here. Couldn't my great grandfather want his only grandkid to know pleasure? He could have wished for her to dive into a surprising place, neither the unwatered earth, nor memory's ruinous hug, but softness. Thank you very, very much, Olga, to both Olgas uh, for reading such a beautiful poems. And now uh, we are going to have with us Pavel Grushko, Pavel Grushko is a poet, playwright, and a translator of poetry and prose from Spain, Latin America, England, and the United States. He's a member of the Moscow Writers' Union and vice president of a specialist in history philology of the Spanish Scholar Association of Russia. Mr. Grushko has published two books, two books of poetry, Forgotten Garden, To Hug a Bunny, and a comprehensive anthology between me and reality. His translations into Spanish were published in Spain, Peru, and Mexico. For his poetry, he was awarded a gold medal at the, Albert, at the Alberico Sala Poetry Contest in Besana, Brianza, Italy, 1994. Uh, Mr. Grushko, Pavel. Sí, gracias. Uh, es que el primer poema que yo quiero leer, perdóname que hablo uh, en español, está dedicado a la memoria de mi abuelo que encontró la muerte uh, junto con mi abuela en Kiev, en Babillar, es famoso lugar de, uh, donde fallecieron uh, muchos judíos en el, uh, en el tiempo de la ocupación uh, uh, de la Unión Soviética. Uh, bien, y viendo aquí a dos Olgas, que parece que viven en Kiev, voy a dedicar esa lectura a ellas. Ты старым был, но не от ветхих лет, утратил жизнь от визжащей пули, как те, кто той лощины не минули. И до сих пор меня терзает дед, не смерть, а то последнее мгновение, когда чужое рвение сочло, Излишней роскоши твое тепло на белом свете. Предысчезновение, которое уводит от людей полнее, чем смерть. Кто знает, что творится в душе растерянного очевидца, расчетливо обдуманных страстей. Не может этот ужас не остаться, прозрение гибнущего бытия, в котором ты и жертва, и судья, не человеческого святотатства. Наверное, даже дети в этот миг Молниеносно старились в надежде уйти естественной смертью, прежде чем рев свинцовый оборвет их крик. Чем остается этот сгусток боли, обида мыслящего существа? Какой туман, ручей или трава, приют последних мыслей в чистом поле? Чем удалить видение это дед? 
куда я спрячу этот ужас вечный, то, как ты ждешь отправки на конечный тот свет, где неизвестно, есть ли свет. Эске ла традукцион десты поэма ису ун традуктор, поэта Кевивин Бостон, Андрей Кнеллер. Muchas gracias, uh, Pavel. Thank you very much, uh, Pavel. And now uh, we are going to have uh, Kyle. Um, uh, Kyle is going to read the translation of uh, Pavel's poem. And Kyle, I wanted to kindly request from you that you explain the introduction uh, that Pavel did. Can you do that, please? Kyle? Um, I, unfortunately, no, I cannot, I, I, I do not speak Spanish, the introduction that he did there. Oh, he did it in Spanish. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, um, kind of, kind of an issue. Um, I just wanted to add then that, um, before Pavel read, uh, his uh, own poem, Pavel uh, dedicated uh, his poem to uh, his grandpa and uh, his uh, grandmother. So um, without a further introduction, introduction from my part, Kyle um, is going to read the translation. Kyle, all yours. Kyle, noise, uh, uh, noise uh, Boston Blues. Uh, uh, explica el que no es el segundo poema que se llama uh, Boston Blues, sino un poema sobre la muerte de, de una persona, ¿no? de mi abuelo. Ok, uh, ok, Pavel. Uh, Kyle? Um, um, actually, I do not have access to the second poem that he was reading. I only have access to Boston Blues, which is what he was saying he did not read. Uh, yeah. Boston Blues será el, será el segundo poem. Right, and the only poem on the website was Boston Blues. ¿Qué dice? Um, Pavel, él dice que no tiene acceso al poema que tú acabas de leer. Ajá. Uh, con todo que yo lo mandé. Bien, yo voy a leer otro poema. Entonces. Uh, Boston Blues. Sí. Ok, perfecto. Бостонские блюзы. Зачем нам память дана? Когда это началось? Есть ли память у птицы? Помнит ли рыба лось? Забыть бы свои обиды. Забыть бы зависть и злость. Что я знаю о мире, думаю я иногда. Что я знаю о людях, думаю я иногда. И себя-то не знаю толком. Что я знаю тогда? О жизни только и знаю, что довелось очнуться. О смерти только и знаю, что с ней не разминуться. Вот бы однажды снова на эту орбиту вернуться. В девять лет у меня появился первый ребенок. Война началась, не стала молока и пеленок. Первый ребенок. Сестра. Худенький вороненок. Все его раздражает. Все ему не по нутру. Все его раздражают. А особенно не по нутру. Тот, что глядит на него из зеркала по утру. Старик в тельняшке, зевая, смотрит на самолет, крестится, чешет в затылки, глядя на самолет, думает, сколько дюрали на крышу сарая пойдет. Плачут, обнявшись двое, две ноги на двоих, в праздник победы плачут, две ноги на двоих, вспоминают, обнявшись, павших друзей своих. За что человека терзали, били, жилы тянули? Ведь знали, что все равно он не минует пули. Узнав всю правду, стало уксусом кин за маравули. Горько плачет старик, стоило ли родиться. На столе у него черствый хлеб и водица. Был, как будто и не был. Вот и вся небылица. Если дом загорится, что прежде всего унести? Если случится такое, что прежде всего унести? Старые фото мамы со мною лет девяти. Любящие обнимаются, юность свое берет. Любящие целуются, юность свое берет. 
и нерожденные дети припираются. Чей черед? Женщина или лепутка лукаво глядит на меня. Как только такого верзилу может носить земля. Как звать малышку? Возможно, ми, но скорее ля. Всегда на этом углу я слышу запах сирени. Даже в морозный день слышу запах сирени. Та женщина пронеслась, будто ветер весенний. Похоже, что я люблю невысоких блондинок. Так вышло, что я люблю невысоких блондинок. Бывает, что и высоких толстоватых латинок. Я иногда приседаю, поза моя смешна, подгибаю колени, поза моя смешна, и мир, каким его видит маленькая она. Прошу тебя, привези мне в подарок что-то одно, какую-нибудь открытку или камушек, все равно. Я пальцы твои пригублю и губы твои заодно. Было бы что отдать, всегда найдется кому. Отдавать очень важно, было бы лишь кому. Все Маше отдам, а себе ее улыбку возьму. Muchas gracias, Pavel. Uh, thank you very much, Pavel. And now uh, um, Kyle Rickert from Case Western Reserve is going to read the translation of this poem. Kyle, all yours. Yes. Boston Blues, uh, as translated into English by Andre Nelner. Uh, and it's dedicated to Margarita Rudyak. Why was memory given to us? When did it first commence? Does a bird have memory? The elk or fish by chance? Oh, to forget jealousy, spite, each insult and every offense. What do I know of the world? I ponder now and again. What do I know of people? I ponder now and again. I don't even know myself, so what could I know then? All I know about life is I somehow happen to wake. All I know about death is it's certain without a mistake. Oh, how great it would be to come back for a double take. I had my first child at nine. I was hardly prepared. War had begun. Swaddles and milk were both rare. First child, a sister, a raven, so thin and threadbare. Everything irks him and nothing is dear to his heart. Everyone irks him, and the very least dear to his heart. Is the one in the mirror each morning his counterpart? An old man yawning looks up at the plane overhead, makes the sign of the cross while looking up overhead, thinks how much duralumen will go to the roof of the shed. Two stand crying, embracing, two legs in all for the two crying on victory day, just two legs in all for the two, embracing, recalling the friends who did not make it through. Why were his tendons ripped out, a man beaten so cruelly? They knew that his bullet was inescapable, truly. Truth was transformed into vinegar of Kinsmarauli. The old man weeps bitterly. Why was I born in the end? On his table, there's water and a crust of old bread. I've lived and soon I'll depart. What is more to be said? If the house should burn, what shall I grab as I flee? If this should happen one day, what shall I grab as I flee? Old photo of mother next to the nine-year-old me. Those in love are embracing. Youth is taking its due. Those in love are now kissing. Youth is taking its due. And the unborn children squabble, who is next in the queue? The Lilliput woman is gazing slyly at me from afar. How can the earth bear someone so tall and bizarre? What's the little one's name? Me? No, probably Lya. On this corner, I hear lilacs scents as they swing. Even on blistery days, I hear lilacs scents as they swing. That woman rushed by me like the wind during spring. I'm attracted, it seems, to the blondes who are usually small. I'm attracted, I'm sure, to the blondes who are usually small. And at times to Latinas as well, who are chubby and tall. Sometimes I squat in an awkward pose undeterred. I am bending my knees in an awkward pose undeterred. And the world appears 
how it seems to the little one, her. Bring me just one simple gift, nothing more, I implore. Some stone or a postcard you happen to see in the store. I will sample your fingers and also those lips I adore. If I only had something to give, I would find to whom. It's important to give, if only I knew now to whom. I will give all to Masha in exchange for her smile and bloom. Thank you very much, Kyle. Uh, Gracias, Kyle. Thank you. And thank you also to Pavel. And um, we are going to be now listening to um, Judith Santo Pietro. Um, Judith is a Mexican writer in Spanish, author of the books, author author of the books Palabras de Agua, the uh, from 2010 and Tiwanaku uh, that has been translated into English poems from the Mother Coca, uh, translation done by Ilana Dan Luna, by the way. And this book uh, has been shortlisted for the Sarah Maguire Prize for Poetry and Translation in the United Kingdom, as well as the essay, Migrantes uh, Nahuas Celebran a Santiago Apostol, Un Ejercicio de Comunalidad in New York. Migrants, now as migrants uh, celebrating Santiago Apostol, an exercise of commonality in New York. She holds a master's degree from the University of Texas at Austin. Currently, uh, Judith writes narratives about indigenous migrant communities settled in New York City and enforced disappearance in Mexico. Um, Judith's, Judith's poems are going to be read by Sidney Negron. Uh, Judith. Cristian, ¿la puedes network? hacer de co-host? Can you make her a co-host? She needs to, she needs to share the screen. Okay. Um, uh, hello. Please. Hola, okay, Judith. Uh, Danos un segundo, Judith. Claro, claro. There she we can go. do it. Okay, um, without further ado, Judith Santo Pietro with you all. Uh, thank you, Christian, and thank you for this invite. It's a pleasure to be with you uh, in this uh, multilingual uh, festivity of languages from around the world. Uh, I'm going to share a couple of points that were originally written in Nahuatl, which is a language from central Mexico, um, and it was my grandmother's uh, tongue. So I had the process of revitalizing on me and like acquiring the language, even when I, an adult, I'm trying to um, make some poetry in this native tongue. It's now what and is more commonly known as Aztec language. Um, this poem is Curandera, um, and there is a, a multi, uh, a poetry video of it that I'm going to share with you as, as I read. See what the path ticket. Se si wat motechtemiki pan quat la paso quatitlamic, itemikilis de palcat la tomoni, ten kitet, atiatilia, la chihualistli comal. Pan pachtemikilistli, ma wilsochime, camahuia, huanquilia. Tlacayolistri de Mitoc, Ica, Tlachihuani. And now the translation in English, right? Yes. Sydney, uh, Sydney Negron. Yes, um, I have a translation for uh, Karen there. Uh, I do not have a translation for the first poem. I, I can read the translation. Okay, go ahead, uh, Judith. Yeah. Um, curandera. A woman dreams again and again in an impenetrable jungle. Her visions are crystal claps of thunder from the alum stone that dissolves the evil in the comal. In medicinal dreams, the sacred plants reveal the body is plagued with invisible animals. 
Um, the second poem is uh, about ants. Ishkaneli kitlachpanach malwili inin owi kampa nehnemise. Piltoshiwitzitzin motlatla sekin tlayowa ke manechkapansi tlawili patlani tiwalowi tlentlali. Ishkaneli kitlachpanach malwili inin owi kampa nehnemise. Naman pitlawitzitzin nemich panshiwit. Neka no kia ni momachakoa y kawitzli wan ni ma esquisa. Y ahora sí, vamos con Sidney. Ants gently sweep those paths on which they'll walk. The sacred plants ignite. Some nights tiny lights fly up from the earth. Ants tenderly sweep those paths on which they'll walk. Although now little fireflies live in the grass, my hands are there too, bleeding and splintered with thorns. Thank you. Uh, muchas gracias a Sydney, uh, Judith. Uh, muchas gracias a ti también. Uh, creo que con eso completamos ya todas las lecturas de hoy. Um, and I don't know why I'm talking in, uh, in Spanish um, when I should be talking in, in English now. Uh, thank you, Sydney. Thank you, Judith. Um, it's been a great number of readings uh, from everybody. Uh, we are going to be closing now. Uh, but before we go away, uh, I want to thank every reader, every poet, and every translator for your wonderful work. I want to thank uh, Professor Puñales and Elena Fernandez as well for putting together all this uh, event. And uh, thank you um, to each and everyone who participated today. And uh, we are going to be next Friday uh, with the second round of uh, poets and readers in this literature against the pandemic. Thank you all. And I don't know if Professor Puñales wants to have a closing words or we are just... Yes, just a final uh, thanks to all of you. It has been great. It has been really moving. Uh, the poems uh, that you have read, the text that you have read, the paintings and the images that you have shared is very powerful. I mean, the power of words uh, is at play here. And um, I feel uh, very honored to have been sharing this time with you. I really appreciate the efforts that everybody has made uh, to make this event possible. And um, I have enjoyed uh, greatly all your readings all your poems the translation i have been um it, it has been an amazing event and i want to thank you again for being part of this muchísimas gracias thanks a lot okay and see you see you next yeah pa pavel please uh, por favor tenemos que agradecer a ustedes que, que hicieron esto a mí me parece perfectamente uh, y también quiero preguntar si uh, se ha hecho la grabación Sí, la grabación está hecha y la vamos a compartir con todos ustedes después. The, this, this event has been recorded and we'll share that uh, link with all of you after the event. Gracias. Gracias. See you next Friday. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. A pleasure. Thank you all. Thank you. Let's go.